All righty. Welcome everyone to the Texas Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. I'm very excited. My name is Chelsea and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you, but you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to the presenters at any time. This is one of many sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Texas. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter and that's gonna be Lycoming College. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'll pull up my PowerPoint here quick. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm excited to kind of share some information with you about Lycoming. Um, uh, first and foremost, uh, where are we located? It's a great question. Uh, we are located in central Pennsylvania. Uh, we're in Williamsport, PA to be um, specific, home of the Little League World Series. Um, so if you follow that around August, that's where we are. Um, we're right across the river. Um, <clears throat> we are about uh, about one of the 50 oldest colleges in the United States. We were founded in 1812. Uh, so we have a very rich history um, of traditions on campus, um, but then also um, a really um, large group of alumni uh, that come and um, are, are involved with our current students, as well as active in our Lycoming community. Um, so Lycoming is a very small um, liberal arts school. We're about 1,200 students total, and we're all undergrad students. Uh, so we're very focused on uh, your development during your undergrad years, what happens uh, kind of in your life right after high school, um, and how to be successful after undergrad if it's um, you going on to graduate school or to a higher degree. Um, um, or, or going into your industry right away. <clears throat> uh, so being such a small school, uh, we like to keep um, our class sizes very small. Uh, so our student to faculty ratio is about 12 to one. Uh, I would say your classes Intro level courses, maybe 25 to 30 um, students, um, but then sometimes when you get up to junior, senior year, uh, it can be as small as five or six. Uh, so depending on where you're coming from, what, what size high school you're coming from, sometimes it's smaller, but sometimes it's larger. Um, so we have kind of a, a group of students um, that's coming from all, all different kinds of backgrounds. Uh, we have about 90 full-time faculty members on our staff and the majority of them hold the highest degree in their field. Uh, so they're not just teaching um, your classes and kind of the, the content that you're learning. They're very involved in their industries. Uh, for example, we have an archeology span major on campus. Um, and our chair of our archaeology department has an active dig site in Cyprus uh, that she often uh, takes our, some of our students to on breaks to help kind of uh, get some work done, get some hand, hands-on experience. Um, it hasn't happened um, in the last few years because of COVID, but hopefully we're, we're going to get back to that. Uh, during your college search, of course, you want to make sure um, the, the, the college or university that you're looking for definitely has your major you're looking for uh, or you're interested in studying. Of course, we're liberal arts, so we have um, those very traditional majors like psychology, criminal justice, uh, business is another very popular one, um, education, uh, but we also have, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a very active theater department on campus, um, art department, um, film and video arts is another very, very uh, popular major, um, but we're also very strong in the natural sciences. Uh, so we have astrophysics uh, as a major, which is a little unique to liberal arts, um, archaeology as well. Um, but then we also just started a biochemistry program, a neuroscience program for students that were, were interested in going on uh, the pre-med track. 
Uh, we also have a, a requirement for all our students um, for them to, to complete an enhanced academic experience. Uh, so on top of the liberal arts requirements and your major requirements, you'll also have to um, complete an enhanced academic experience. Uh, so some of those could be an internship. Um, we do a lot of local internships in the Williamsport area. Um, so we actually have a specific a WISE program. So it's a Williamsport internship summer experience uh, for our students to stay over the summer on campus, uh, get experience and an internship in our community. Um, we also have um, affiliations with major metropolitan areas. Uh, if students are looking to kind of get out of Williamsport and the more rural area uh, to do an internship, um, that picture on the bottom of your screen there um, is actually one of our students in uh, the Smithsonian um, in DC over, I think it was a few years back. Uh, another enhanced academic experience um, that's fairly popular uh, for our students is our field work. <coughs> of course, archaeology I mentioned, education with student teaching, uh, research is another really really popular one, as well as studying abroad. Uh, and of course, we weren't able to study abroad the last few years, but hopefully we'll get back to that in the next year or so. Um, so we are a residential campus, uh, so we really try to keep our students active uh, with our clubs and organizations. We have about 80 different clubs and organizations on campus. Um, you can kind of see the different um, groups we have on there. Um, Greek life, uh, we have service oriented um, office with the civic engagement office if you're looking to volunteer in the area. Um, we also are part of D3 athletics um, and have intramurals as well. Um, so, of course, getting to the applying portion, and I know um, I'm about out of time, but I definitely want to get to the application. Uh, we use the common application as well as the coalition application, uh, and we do not have an application fee. Um, so it's as simple as kind of including us on your common app. Um, and we are also... Um, 100% of our students receive some sort of financial aid. Uh, so when you apply and get accepted, you're automatically evaluated for a merit-based scholarship. Then we also have um, talent scholarships as well, like homing grants um, that we uh, determine through FAFSA. Um, and then also um, STEM and more scholarships as well. So a lot with directly through like homing, but then also through um, through the federal government as well. Um, so thank you so much for, for listening about like homing. Um, I don't think I introduced myself at the beginning, sorry. Um, my name is Sarah Etheridge. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them um, through the Q&A. Thanks so much. Wonderful, thank you. Next up, we have Minot State University. All right, let's see here. Share that. Um, forgot to have the slideshow ready. All right, there we go. Uh, hi, I'm Brett Holovichek from Minot State University. And uh, I'm the admissions counselor for the Western side of the United States. So if you guys are interested in Minot State, you can come to me. Um, so let's get on with it. Uh, Minot State is in Minot, North Dakota, um, which is right up there. Uh, if you look very closely, you can see it's way up there. But uh, Minot City has about 50,000 people, and there's stuff to do, even though the campus has 3,000 people. We try to act, uh, give you all the opportunities that a big university can uh, give you as well. Um, for example, that is our campus. You can see it all in this little picture. It's about a block. Um, and they, that may not seem big, but I'm going to show you what we all have on this campus to show that even though we're a block in size with 3,000 students, we have so many opportunities to you, for you that we act like we're a big university. For example, look at all of our majors. Um, we have majors from um, humanities to arts to sciences to business to um, the medical field. Um, for example, our main academic programs alone are nursing, biology, elementary education, management, and communications disorders. That's what most people come to Minot State for. 
but you also saw that we had a bunch of other programs as well. Um, there's over a hundred areas of study and uh, because the university size is smaller, you usually get to meet people from each and every single one of these majors. Like I meet people from the art majors, even though I grew, uh, I came here as a business student. Um, there's also many resources on campus that we um, provide to you. Everything is included in your tuition. So you don't have to pay anything extra for any of these areas like career services, tutoring services, all these things that can help you in your future field um, is completely free for you. So you don't have to worry if you're struggling in a class that you have to spend 15 bucks, you can easily just get in for free as well as when you're um, ready for a new job, for a job, we have career services that can help you. Um, first up on campus, we have over a thousand activities available to you. Um, we have intramurals. I did intramural bowling. Um, I hurt myself because my team left me. Make sure you have a grand team if you come here. Um, that Just good friends, just saying that. Um, but these people at MSU Life like to have huge events going on where it's either potting succulents or um, 500 ways to win where they drop a bunch of ping pong balls from the ceiling and you have a chance to win a prize if you bring a ping pong ball up. So they have a bunch of separate uh, uh, activities going on on campus so that there's always something to do. You just have to look for it. Um, if you like sports, we have a lot of sports. Um, I did not include all the sports teams on here because we just recently added women's wrestling. It's a club. Um, but you can also see that we are a NCAA D2 team and we have official teams as well as ACHA, which is the hockey team and the for the men's and women. So their clubs are not NCAA affiliated, um, but all these are fun to watch. I love to go to all the games. Uh, all the games are free for students. So you can go and check that out. Um, for the admission requirements, um, 2.75 GPA is the base requirement. High school core, which uh, you can look at on our website and statement of intent, which is just a few sentences on why you wanna come to university. Um, so just make sure it's grammatically correct because we do notice that. Um, for the checklist, it's $35 for application fee, but if you apply in November, it's completely free. So if you want to just apply and uh, just try anyway, $35 is for free and you just send in your application. Don't even need to spend anything. Uh, what we need with that would be your in-progress high school transcript. Um, when you're about to graduate, please tell your high school to send in your final official transcript to us. Um, we recommend your ACT slash SAT score, but it is not required. Um, I'll get to why it's recommended later. And official college transcripts if you did AP or dual credit classes. Um, for tuition, we are the most affordable university for out-of-state students. It's um, If you add up all the prices with the tuition and room and board, it's about $15,000 per uh, year, not semester, academic year. And... Um, we got a bunch of people who can uh, get a lot of scholarships. I'll explain to that in just a sec. Um, with the automatic four-year uh, year award program, if you apply and you are accepted, you, uh, you can get this. If you hit one of the criteria, you can see with the ACT score, you can get a lot more or slash SAT score, you can get a lot more than just sending your GPA. Uh, the priority deadline for that is July 1st. So I recommend... Uh, applying sooner rather than later. And if you apply before February 15th and you're accepted prior to February 15th, you can apply for the Minot State scholarships that I have right there underneath the July 1st sign um, for where you can get the scholarships for that. If you have any questions at all about anything I went through, kind of zoom through a lot of this, you can easily contact me or anyone else at askmsu.com. Uh, I leave my email right here, my phone number. I don't mind if you email or call. And like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to message me, all right? Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks so much. Okay, next up we have Penn State. All right, hi everybody. I uh, hope everybody is doing great. So I know it says Christine Schmidmauer on the screen. Uh, my name is actually Jordan, I'm filling in for Christine. She has her wedding coming up soon, so she's preparing for that. Um, but I'm keeping her name there just so you can contact her because she is your first uh, form of contact for Texas area. So uh, excited to chat with you a little bit about Penn State. 
Um, we'll go through a little bit on our academics, a little bit on the application process. And again, if you have questions, put it in the Q&A or you can send an email to Christine. So Penn State is a top ranked university. We were recently ranked in the top 50th out of 18,000 institutions globally. Uh, so pretty cool. Uh, our graduation rate is about 85% and then our retention rate is about 93%. So our graduation rate and our retention rate are both above national averages. Uh, the retention rate basically means we have our students come in for their first year and then 93% of those students will choose to stay for their second year. So that tells us as staff members that you love Penn State, you're loving your experience, and that's awesome, uh, and you want to stay, which is what we really want you to do as well. Um, we do have top-ranked career services. We have lots of opportunities for uh, internships, co-ops, uh, our network, and I'll talk about our alumni network in a little bit, uh, but it's very, very large, so it's really exciting to go through the internship process for a lot of students. We also have over 300 study abroad programs for students to choose from. Uh, we are on every single continent except Antarctica. So unfortunately you can't go to Antarctica, uh, but you can go basically anywhere else. Uh, we are a research one institution. So we do a lot over a billion dollars in undergraduate research alone. So if you wanna get involved in research, this is a really great place to look. Uh, and although we are a large university, we do have a student to faculty ratio of about 16 to one. One thing people do not know about Penn State is we have 20 unique campuses. So University Park is our largest. That's right in the middle of Pennsylvania. Uh, that has 46,000 students at that campus alone. All of our other campuses that surround the state have between 500 to 5,000 students. So you can kind of pick and choose uh, what experience works best for you. All of our campuses offer a four-year Pennsylvania State University degree. So it doesn't matter which campus you attend, you get that Penn State University degree university degree wherever you go. Uh, the campuses that have on-campus housing are the ones indicated here with the monopoly houses. The red monopoly houses mean that you are guaranteed and required to live on campus your first year. So in your first year, you do have to live on campus. After that, you do not have to. Uh, keep in mind, not all majors are offered at all of our campuses. So if you do have an interest in a major and it's not available at the campus you wanna attend, uh, you can do something called the two plus two plan. Uh, which allows you to do two years at any campus of your choosing, and then you can transition and complete your degree at the campus that offers your major. So uh, it's a really unique opportunity, really unique experience to Penn State, um, and it gives students a chance to get acclimated to school first, uh, and then maybe move into a larger setting if that's available. So speaking of majors, uh, we have over 275 academic programs. So whenever I go to high schools or colleges, I always have students that will say, well, what majors do you have? Or what's your most popular major? That's so hard to tell you because there are so many. So we have 275 programs uh, ranging from engineering to arts and architecture, communications, business, so many different options. And they're all housed in our 13 academic colleges. So we have College of Business, we have the College of Communications, we have the College of Engineering, uh, and you'll basically apply into the college of your interest. So if you're interested in a specific major or specific college, uh, you'll apply into that academic college. We do have an undecided college, so it's called our Division of Undergraduate Studies, uh, and you're able to start there and then spend two years there. At the end of your second year, you can officially declare your major. We have over 1200 different organizations for you to uh, join. We have, most of them are actually student run. So they range from club sports, intramural sports, all the way from arts, theater, dance, anything you can think of it is available uh, at Penn State. So application process, how do you move through this process? Uh, so we do have an online application through the Common App, the Coalition App, or directly through our website. Uh, when you complete your application, you will be prompted through email to create a My Penn State profile. So that profile is going to be your home base for all things Penn State. Uh, it's going to have your checklist. It's going to have your decision posted. Uh, it's also going to have your self-reported academic record. So your SRAR, you'll report your ninth through 11th grade grades and then your 12th grade schedule. We are test optional up until the year 2023. So this year and next year, you're able to submit your test course, but you do not have to if you don't want to. Uh, future years, I'm not sure if we're gonna continue that, we'll keep you posted. Um, but yeah, if you wanna submit your test course, you can, uh, but it does not disadvantage you if you do not submit your test course. And last but not least, that My Penn State profile is what we'll need. 
Here's a good look at your eligibility at Penn State. Uh, the top number is University Park, and then the bottom numbers are all of our other campuses. So it gives you a good estimate on where you fall as far as a Penn State student. Uh, we don't have minimums at Penn State, but this just gives you our middle 50% of the students that were currently admitted. So uh, just gives you a good estimate on your eligibility. Here's a little bit on the timeline. So November 1st is our early action deadline. Uh, that will get you a decision by December 24th. So you have that decision uh, and then you can kind of sit on that decision until May 1st. So plenty of time there. Uh, we accept rolling up, rolling admissions uh, after that November 1st deadline. Last but not least, uh, alumni network. We have the largest alumni network in the world. Um, so this is a really great network. And if you want to get involved in it, it's really cool to jump in as early as your first year at Penn State. Uh, if you ever get a chance, you can check out our whiteout at our football games. Uh, it's pretty incredible to see 110,000 people uh, celebrating our football team. That's Christine's email. So if you do have questions, I'll put it in the chat box as well. Uh, but feel free to email her or ask during this session. Thank you all. Thank you so much. All right, next up we have Temple University. Okay, um, my name is Mario Ruth. Um, I'm the Texas Regional Recruiter for Temple University. Um, so I'm based out of the Dallas area. Um, I, in addition to working for Temple, I'm a Temple dad. Uh, my son, who you see here in this picture, he's actually a senior and he's a sports management major. Um, and I like to tell people that I followed him to college. Um, in fact, that's what he loves to say. But I like pointing out that I'm a Temple dad because I think it, it, gave, it gives me a front row seat to find to him finding Temple and ultimately deciding it was a good school for him. And I think it just gives some perspective as I'm talking to prospective students. Temple is in Philadelphia. Um, and the picture you see here is from our campus looking south towards Center City. Um, and in Philadelphia, we don't call it downtown, we call it Center City. Um, it's just one of those quirks in, terminolo in terminology that many cities have. Um, we're very much a city school. Yet we have a well-defined campus. Uh, and when you visit campus, one of the many things you'll notice are the multitude of food trucks. Um, it's an ongoing debate as to the best food truck on campus. Um, and there's a food truck for just about any type of food that you like. And we have two subway stops on campus and you can get from Temple to Center City in about six to eight minutes. Um, the idea of riding the subway may seem intimidating, but Philadelphia is actually very easy to navigate. Um, Temple is actually located on Broad Street, which is the main north-south artery of the city. We were founded in 1884, and I love to tell our history um, because I think it's unique. We were founded in the basement of the Baptist Temple. Uh, Dr. Russell Conwell was a noted preacher. Um, and the story goes that one of the members of his church came up to him one day and asked to be tutored. Um, the man said he wanted to further his education, but he had to work during the day. Um, Dr. Conwell invited him back um, in the evening, and the man returned with some friends. Those initial students were affectionately dubbed the night owls by people in the community. Um, the name stuck and we adopted the owl as our mascot. We're actually the first university to have the owl as our mascot. So we're obviously a lot different now. We're currently 27,000 undergraduate students. We offer over 150 majors. Um, and while we are large, we promote an environment where students feel connected to the community. Um, and that's evidenced by our 13 to one student to faculty ratio and 91% of our classes having fewer than 50 students. Um, some noted programs are our direct admit nursing program, our health scholars program um, that can provide provisional acceptance into our medical school, our film program. Um, students have the option of spending a semester in Los Angeles and working on a studio lot, and our sports management program, which is one of the top programs in the nation. Most recently, we had students who worked the NBA bubble, as well as the bubbles for the Cotton Bowl and the Rose Bowl. Um, a fun fact about Temple is that it is home to the first PhD program in African American studies. Um, we also welcome undecided students with open arms. At Temple, we are committed to our students graduating in four years. Um, we have something called our Fly in Four program. In this voluntary program, um, students must complete 30 credits per year and meet with an advisor at least once per semester. Temple agrees to make sure an advisor is available and classes are available. If a student doesn't graduate in four years because a class wasn't offered, additional class or classes will be at no cost to the student. 
Experiential education is also strongly promoted, and we view the city of Philadelphia as our second classroom. With almost 150,000 graduates in the Philadelphia area, our students have numerous opportunities to leverage those connections to land jobs and internships. In addition, we're less than 150 miles from New York, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C., and it's not uncommon for our students to explore those cities. For students who are interested in traveling abroad, we have a campus in Rome and another one in Tokyo, Japan. Our Japan campus is unique in that it is a degree granting institution. Our Rome campus, we offer a first year program where students can spend their first year of college in Rome and then transition to the main campus. Um, the Japan and Rome campuses can also be utilized as traditional study abroad locations. Um, if you aren't interested in, in Rome or Tokyo, we have opportunities worldwide and an advisor in the study abroad office can assist with finding an opportunity that makes sense for you. So our application, um, we utilize what I call a two-in-one admission application. When you apply, you'll be considered for three things, admission, honors program, and merit scholarships. We are heading into our seventh year of being test optional, and so that's not going to change going forward. Um, we're true test optional, and that means students who elect to apply without test scores are considered for all of the same programs as those who do submit test scores. That includes scholarships. That includes the honors program. We're Common App exclusive. We have an early action deadline of November 1 and a regular decision deadline of February 1st. Um, we do do the self-reported high school transcript from within our system. So you will not send us a high school transcript. You will enter your grades into the system um, we call TU Portal. I look forward to working with you all. You see my contact information here. You are welcome to take a picture of this slide. Again, I only work with students in the state of Texas. I reside in the Dallas, Texas area. Um, and so please reach out if you have any questions. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Next up we have Westminster College. All right. My name is Cody Clements and I'm pulling up my PowerPoint for you all here. Okay, so again, my name is Cody Clements and I am an admissions counselor at Westminster College. A little bit of housekeeping. We are the Westminster College in Salt Lake City, Utah. And so there's a lot of Pennsylvania institutions here today. And so if anyone's um, keying in, we are not the Westminster in Pennsylvania. We're the Westminster in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, so Salt Lake City is a fantastic city. Um, specifically, we're located uh, in Little Sugar House, which is a, a great, fun, funky little community with lots of uh, coffee shops. Um, there's some dance clubs, some breweries, all kinds of fun stuff. So we've been around since 1875, and we're a private, independent, liberal arts institution. And so what I like to talk about with liberal arts, because I think sometimes this can be a confusing word for people, um, liberal arts does, is not just art majors and English majors. Um, it can encompass any kind of major. So liberal arts is a form of education where you study one subject from multiple perspectives. Um, so that's a little bit about what the liberal arts perspective is. Um, at Westminster, we are a small institution. So our total student enrollment is about 1,850 students. And so as you're all thinking about colleges, one of the things I would do and suggest is making a pros and cons list. So do you think you're gonna thrive in a larger school? Are you one of smaller schools? Do you wanna be in rural? Do you wanna be in urban? All of these things add up. So you can see all of these institutions are vastly different. And so you need to find what works for you. Um, again, being a small institution, we do have a strong representation from out of state. About 47% of our students are from out of state, and our average class size is 15. We have over, different, over 50 different academic majors and programs at Westminster, and we have five distinct schools. So we have the Schools of Arts and Science, the School of Business, the School of Ed, the School of Nursing and Health Science, and the Honors College. Um, and so as you can see on this list, there are many different options to choose from, um, and it's okay to be undecided, as was mentioned earlier. Um, we, we give students a few years to figure it out. And the other piece of college advice I want to give is you don't have to know what your major is, and you don't have to stick to that major. Um, if you ever feel that sociology wasn't for you and you want to switch to management, that's okay. Um, Westminster College is a Division II institution. 
And uh, there are all kinds of different athletics you can choose from. So we have alpine ski, basketball, cross country, lacrosse, soccer. Um, absolutely, we get all kinds of skiers and snowboarders at Westminster. Um, we've had a significant amount of students at Westminster participate in the Olympics. Um, and so that's just kind of a, a cool, unique culture that uh, Westminster has. Um, again, like all, not all the institutions, but most institutions have club sports as well. So we have cheer, cycling, dance, snowboarding, um, and all of that good stuff. There's lots of different co our academic programs and co-curricular activities at Westminster. Um, and because we're a little short on time, I won't dive too much into that. Um, student life, we do require that students live on campus during your first two years. There's traditional style housing, there's apartment style housing. Um, one really cool thing about Westminster is that in order to be a club and receive funding, students actually have to do community service. And so within the past six years, I believe it is at Westminster, students have done over 500,000 hours of community service. Um, so it's a community that cares about giving back. Again, when you're looking at colleges, you can see this long list of student support services that Westminster offers. And so for you, you need, to, you need to know kind of what you're looking for. And so if you're really passionate about the environment, the environmental center might be something that speaks to you. And so as you're going to campuses, you can say, hey, do you have an environmental center or do you have a disability services center? Um, and so each campus is gonna have um, it, its different resources to support you. And so my advice is to advocate for what you need. Um, Westminster is also a very veterans friendly campus. Um, and we're a yellow ribbon school as well. So paying for college, always an important uh, topic. Every student uh, that is admitted to Westminster will be uh, eligible for an academic scholarship. So these start at $11,000 and go up to 27,000 per year. Needs-based needs grants come from the FAFSA, the Free Application for Student Aid. And then we have talent-based scholarships. So this comes from the performing arts, such as music, dance, and theater, and our NCAA athletic scholarships as well. Um, so again, many different types of aids that students can be eligible for. Applying to Westminster College, we have a free application. Um, like many of the institutions tonight, we utilize the Common App as well. Um, and so I tell students, you can use our internal website, you can use Common App, it doesn't matter. Um, if you want to submit your test score, that's great. If you choose not to, um, what we'll need is your high school transcript, and we're going to need a personal essay as well. So you can see some of our dates here on the right. In general, we try to make it as smooth as possible for your application. And again, my name is Cody, and if you have any questions about Westminster College, please don't hesitate to email admission at westminstercollege.edu, and we look forward to answering some questions later. Awesome, thanks so much. All right, at this point in the evening, um, we had one college that was unable to join us, so we are gonna move forward. Um, I'm gonna ask that all of the um, presenters jump back on. We're gonna hear from them one more time. Um, and I'm gonna share a question here. So we're gonna start with like homing again. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Yes, that's a great question. Uh, so I would say my advice is to um, visit and kind of um, talk to your admissions counselor and to current students with whatever college or university you're looking into. Um, In-person visits are often um, the best way to get kind of a, a gist of uh, the campus community and how you feel on campus. Um, but now with COVID, there's a bunch of virtual visits as well. Um, so that way you can kind of visit all over the country like you guys are doing today with Pennsylvania and Texas. And you can kind of um, um, get a wider, wider range of schools um, and visit them virtually. And I know uh, with us specifically, we have in-person and virtual visits available with current students and professional staff. Uh, so that way um, you get kind of all the resources virtually that you would on campus if you would come. Uh, so I definitely say um, uh, visiting the schools and universities that you're looking into is a, is a good um, starting point with your process. Thank you. My next date, what is your advice? 
Yeah, I like the visiting idea, but um, what I usually recommend to people is find like, do you know what major you will like, uh, what you want to go into, and then figure out how far do you want to go from home? Do you want to like travel far? Do you want to come up to North Dakota? Do you want to go to Pennsylvania? It's all up to you. And then when you figure that out, then look up universities that are great for your major. Um, we all want you to go to our university, but um, if you want to go to welding, Minot's not going to have that for you. So find something that you love, and then go for it and find the right university. You have all of us to talk to, to help you, but it's all up to you and just find whatever you love and we'll support you on that, all right? Thank you. Penn State, what is your advice? Yeah, I guess my advice would be, and I'm gonna use Christine's advice here because she uses it all the time because she's a first generation college student. So she says, ask for help. Um, we're all here to help you. So obviously you're at this session, you're interested in these schools. Um, if, our, if your school that you're interested in is not here, um, reach out to that school. There, there are counselors that are willing and able to help you. And uh, maybe it's an email just to the general admissions and that's completely fine. There's somebody out there that can kind of say, hey, here's the person you need to talk to. Um, and we're all happy to help. But most of us are extroverts too. So uh, we want to talk to people. We want to say hi. So even if you don't have anything to say or ask, just shoot us an email. And we can chat. Awesome. Thank you. Temple University, what is your advice? Yeah, I always tell students to, you know, really lean into this experience um, and try not to let it overwhelm you or stress you out. Um, it's a really big decision, um, but it can be extremely exciting. Um, and so try to keep that kind of um, level um, and, and stay away from maybe getting yourself, you know, overwhelmed. Um, so making use of all the resources around you, um, especially if you know you have a regional recruiter who can really give you a lot of focus, um, make use um, of that. We are here to help you. Um, and the last thing we want is for you to feel, you know, overwhelmed or, or having heightened sense of anxiety over such a big decision. And so we really want to help you. We want you to enjoy this process. Um, it is kind of a unique time in your life where you're making probably the most important decision you've ever made. Um, so I want you to enjoy it um, as you are making, you know, a tough decision. Awesome. Thank you. And Westminster, what is your advice? Yeah, I would echo what everyone said. Um, and I, I think advocate for yourself and the, the different ways that that may occur. So again, if application fees seem like a barrier, talk to the recruiter and say, hey, is there a way that I can get an application waiver? And again, if you're first gen and, and you're wondering, are I, I don't know what I'm doing in this process. Are you able to help me? Someone absolutely will help you. Um, again, getting to campuses saying, are there other students that represent these ideas or beliefs that I have? Um, there's so many people who are happy to answer these questions, but you have to be the one to ask them so we know how to help. Awesome, thank you for that. Thank you everyone for your advice. Um, let's do one more question here. Uh, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? And we'll jump back to Lycoming. Um, just picking one thing might be a little hard, um, but I would definitely say uh, the one thing like homing really um, is strong with is the individualized attention. Um, so through the admissions process, you do have a specific admissions counselor, um, as well as our entire office to kind of touch base with. Um, and we specifically sit down and read your applications. I can't tell you how many times I've read essays and like my eyes have gone cross-eyed uh, because I can't read on a computer screen anymore. Um, so we really um, do treat you all as individuals kind of through the admissions process. If you have any questions, we're also your financial aid counselors at Lake Homing. Um, so I know financial, um, the financial aspect is the huge component uh, to, to students' searches. Uh, so we kind of walk you through the FAFSA and merit scholarships and everything we can provide through like homing. Uh, and then we also have a Dean of First Year Students we work very closely with um, through the summer months uh, when students are deciding to enroll in like homing. Uh, and then of course getting enrolled in classes and things like that. So you have kind of two points of uh, a contact there. And then of course, when you start class 
classes, you have the Dean of first year students, but then also your, your academic advisor um, for classes and then your career advisor for kind of figuring out what to do after school. Uh, so, so there's a bunch of different touch points for Lycoming that we really do kind of give you individualized attention. Thank you. My not state, what is your uh, one thing? Uh, that's almost also a tough question, but um, the one I thought about just right now when you said it is um, the community of Minot State University. It's like we have 3,000 students. There's a lot of stuff to do, but it's that um, part where you can build just relationships with everyone, your professor, uh, your classmates, a classmate from an entirely different department. Some of my closest friends I made at this university are from different departments, and I just love how everybody can mix. And that's sometimes where the best ideas come from is when you mix with people with different mindsets. And that's what I love about Maya. There's people from around the world and you get to experience that in a smaller community. Thank you, Penn State. I'm going to go a little non-traditional here. Uh, Penn State is known for their ice cream. So if you get the chance to come visit, uh, go to the Berkey Creamery. Uh, we have some of the best ice cream. And I think Guy Fieri has also said that is some of the best ice cream he's ever had. Um, so you can try our awesome ice cream. You could also go say hi to the cows that made your ice cream. Um, it's a pretty cool place. My favorite is Mint Nittany, um, but you'll have to come try it yourself. Love that. Thank you. Tempo, what is your one thing? I guess for me, it's all about location. Um, and I mean that um, in a couple of different ways. Um, the location of our campus and our campus community and how it feels like a real college in spite of being in a major city. Um, our location in terms of how connected we are to the city of Philadelphia. Temple and the city of Philadelphia are closely tied. You can't move around the city very much without seeing the Temple T flag flying. And then our location in terms of where we are on the East Coast with easy access to New York, Washington DC, Baltimore. So I think one of the unique things that I always want students to remember when they think about Temple is where we're located and the advantages of our location. Awesome, thank you. And Westminster. Uh, for sure, Westminster is an outdoor lover's paradise. Um, so we have the mighty five national parks um, we have some of the best ski resorts in the nation, uh, maybe in the world. I don't ski or snowboard, so it's always hard for me to say that genuinely, but um, many people, they, they truly love it. Um, we have an outdoor education major where they spend a semester backpacking and working on wilderness first aid um, certification, all that good stuff. Um, but also, if you don't love the outdoors, again, we're in the city and all kinds of the city vibes to have as well. So you get the best of both worlds. Awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you all for your responses. Um, I am going to start wrapping things up for us here. Um, so thank you to our presenters for all of your time and the information you've put together for us this evening. And thank you to our participants for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick survey. We really appreciate any feedback you can provide. Uh, I believe there's one more session, so we encourage you to check back to the site schedule and sign up if you're interested, uh, and you will be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session's recordings at strivescan.com slash Texas. And with that, we wrap up our session. Thank you so much for being with us. Have a great evening.